Um, I'd like to go ahead and open up the uh, budget committee meeting for Monday, July 24th, and uh, have our clerk read, uh, have a uh, roll call, please. Here. 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 Hey, thank you. Uh, I'd first like to welcome uh, Megan Elbridge as our uh, clerk for tonight. Thank you for sitting in for uh, Phyllis, and we'll uh, go forward with um, uh, the first item on the agenda, uh, which is the mayor presents the budget. Uh, so prior to going into that discussion, I'd like to y'all think about um, whether or not Thursday night there's a few commitments. So we may have a discussion whether or not we'll cancel Thursday, depending on how much we get done tonight and whether or not that presents a true conflict, because it is a conflict for at least three of us here. So, uh, Mayor, would you like to start off with your uh, budget, please? Sure. Thank you. And first, uh, does everybody have my uh, letter was that already passed around the uh, the July 24th 2017 letter or do we still have that back if here, you Margie? synced up it's on the electronic version and you okay I did the electronic and I think everybody should have one at their place also um, so I just wanted to touch on I won't read it word for word but we'll um, kind of touch on a few highlights so um, First of all, thank you, Councilman Mahalovich, for leading the budget committee. Looking forward to this project. And um, one thing you touched on is the upcoming meetings. And uh, I did want to note that the next few meetings, I do have some conflicts and will not be available to attend. And so I just want to make it known that I, I will definitely try to get to all of them. But my not being here doesn't mean that I'm not interested in the process. And, and we can tune in and watch them. So I'll intend to, to do that. So I want to make sure that council understands my interest and that I do apologize that I have a few conflicts on some of the, the next upcoming meetings. Um, and they are all the meetings are on the website for those that are tuning in at jeffersoncitymo.gov. They can see our complete list. They're mostly Monday and Thursday nights. So looking forward to those. And soon everybody will have the uh, the big binder like this that's a few inches thick that they can look at for now um, I believe the uh, PDF has been emailed is that correct everybody has that in their inbox so so they can do that and um, I know when it comes to budgets and numbers it's great to have the hard copy papers um, when I went through the budget I did it strictly by uh, the electronic version this time and as we try to get a little more electronic kind of reminds me of going from the the paper packets at council to the electronic packets and it's a change but but I think a good change too so um, I would encourage you all to start by going through the electronic version and also I know uh, Mrs. Miller would appreciate any input that we have uh, going through it uh, for example a few things I noticed were some of the tabs it's not as easy when you can just get a budget notebook and you see exactly what tab you're in um, I noted a few other things like some of the page numbers that were not necessarily in the hard copy, but I think they may be in the hard copy once we get that finalized. Um, the, the earlier version did not. Um, and I know the software does have some, um, I guess, uh, layout that it, that it would use, so we, we uh, would fall within the layout of the software. But I would um, encourage all of us to look at the electronic version, and like I said, please offer your input. and. And hopefully we can eventually get to an all electronic and in future years we may not need the books at all I know that's been suggested in past years so I think we're getting closer and closer to that um, so looking at my uh, reference letter and uh, as you'll see in here I made uh, very few changes to what was presented in the budget um, and I would attribute that to staff being very receptive to council and to the discussions that have been had at the council meetings. Um, the finance committee meetings have been very productive with extensive reports given which allows the council and the public to keep up with the financial position of the city throughout the year. And this is my ninth budget. My third is mayor and I do take the budget process very seriously so please um, don't take that I made very few changes as not giving input into the process I looked through every page or every electronic page 
and every line uh, on every page and I'm pleased and confident on what finance has presented and the city administrator Kroll's budget which I now present to you um, a few of the highlights here you'll see in the actual letter um, the different tabs here overall budget um, revenues which Margie will touch on this evening um, the next bullet point is salary and wage adjustments and as council embarked on a salary study um, you'll see some of the suggestions reflected in here such as the 2% um, the salary and wage adjustment and then also the addition of a floating holiday which is touched on on the second page of the letter and um, that increases the time off as suggested by the class and comp a study that was done while minimizing costs to the city um, and then there's a few other items the health insurance um, the mayor's addition which is uh, in the non-departmental budget is a uh, $20,000 funding for MSP um, I'll draw your attention to the uh, additional sheet that goes along with that and that is the uh, MSP improvements that we've done over the last three years um, we likely won't get to that tonight but I just thought I would share with it with you so that you have the information for whenever whatever meeting that does fall in um, in 2016 the city contributed 15,000 improvements to the uh, historic area and that was used for improvements to lighting and masonry uh, pilaster work on housing unit 3 and you'll see that those were uh, all cost shared together city county state and convention of visitors bureau um, when we did that in 2016 which I appreciate the council's um, uh, approval of that the CVB matched our money so our 15,000 became 30,000 plus uh, the additional 5,000 by the county um, last year we budgeted 20,000 and then you'll see that in this proposed budget there's a 20,000 um, the 20,000 from 2017 hasn't been spent quite yet but we're working closely with the CVB and I outlined on here a couple of potential projects that would also be cost shared one of the potential projects is some historic lighting that could be used to increase lighting around the entrance of the prison and uh, they would be some historic light fixtures that are my understanding actually used to be at MSP so they they're interested in bringing those back to life and the other projected uh, port uh, possible project could uh, be some restroom improvements at MSP and I know sometimes it's not always glamorous to talk about restrooms but when we have that many uh, tourists there you know, 34,000 tourists last year um, the CVB has an example at the bottom of the page of a trailer that's used at Eastern State Penitentiary in Pennsylvania and that possibly they would like to fund something like that here so um, typically when we uh, approve the funds we don't decide exactly what those projects will be but there are a few projects on the table so I wanted to make sure since that was an item that was added in that council had all the uh, information in front of them um, on that decision um, and then fiscal challenges going back to the mayor's letter um, we have the capital expenditures staffing levels um, under the staffing level level bullet point I do want to mention that um, very few staff positions were added to this budget only one full-time position which was created by combining two current part-time positions were added and one additional part-time position is reflected as added in this budget so very few um, I already touched on the floating holiday you'll also see transit airport are highlighted in here and then um, at the end the general the general fund and reserve bal fund balance at 17 percent so um, I also want to note uh, stormwater is not reflected in this letter but I've had a, a couple of councilmen ask about it so I did want to uh, briefly touch on that also that uh, typically the stormwater is um, taken out of the sales tax and we have a, a current budget for that um, in this budget there is nothing additional in the uh, the fund balance to uh, supplement that for any anything uh, in particular so I did want to note that uh, that you will not see that in this budget that it's not taken out there's nothing additional um, budgeted for in fund balance and um, with that that's kind of my overview and um, during this process if any council has questions of me I'm willing to uh, be as active as possible and you know at this point like our 
our charter states the, the city administrator presents a budget to the mayor and then I get a chance to review it and then um, and pass it on to council and then council ultimately will will um, make those decisions and and change and hear from department directors and um, there may be things that I'll hear from department directors as well that would make me even want to change a few things in here too but I can tell you at this time very confident in what we have in front of us uh, there's very little leeway uh, to, to go one direction or another but I feel confident in uh, having very low levels of extra staffing but also being able to accomplish uh, some goals in, within this budget so um, before I turn it over to uh, Mrs. Miller I want to thank uh, Mrs. Miller for her work I know this is her second budget here at the city many many budgets she's done before and um, and I feel like she's done several for the city because it's been such a smooth process and also in the work you've done at finance committee meetings and also to Sheila and your entire department for working hard and getting um, all of the uh, numbers and information to council so with that first I'll ask if there's any questions of me and then I'll I will turn it over to Mrs. There, uh, Miller any questions of Mayor Turgeon all right so I think we'll have an opportunity to go through um, these line items uh, in the future and discuss those thank you for laying that out in a very clear and condensed manner I think the next thing on the uh, agenda then would call for revenue discussion by our uh, chief uh, financial officer uh, and uh, staff and I too want to thank also the finance department for all they've done to put this in a readable form and uh, I appreciate the work done by staff and the photocopier throughout the weeks and days <laughs> to keep up with uh, the voluminous amounts of material we're going to be seeing here soon. It, it does, I, I do want to remind people that it is, uh, all the budgets and all this information is available on the web as well as our meetings are being recorded so they can go back and, and uh, see those and contact any of your council uh, uh, members to find out whether or not they have any questions. Uh, Councilman Graham. Yes, uh, I just wanted to say before we get started uh, to our city administrator, thank you for this proposed budget and Madam Mayor, thank you so very much as well too. I know we don't have any, a lot of wiggle room in here uh, and Madam Mayor, I know I was one of the persons that called to ask about stormwater and so to this council before we even get started, I sincerely hope they were able to find some monies in here that's going to help start to address stormwater issues more than what we currently have budgeted. I know we haven't started talking about that yet, but I do want to uh, put that on the um, on the forefront of each and every uh, council member here as we move forward with this budget. So um, I just wanted to say that, and like I said, thank you, Madam Mayor, for, for your uh, proposed budget. Thank you. Thank you. I think we'll go ahead and... Uh have your presentation of the revenue discussion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You should have a, a handout in front of you of the revenue pages. It's a, about a six-page, seven-page document, starting with the pie chart of the uh, the general fund summary. Um, and these, uh, the doc, the full budget document will be available on the website tomorrow morning, along with the mayor's budget letter. Um, and um, um, any other handouts that we will be going through. So beginning with the FY16 actual, um, for information purposes, you can see on the front page the $32,650,443, the FY17 current budget at a little over 35.8, and the FY18 mayor approved budget of $32,441,302. Um, this is just for illustration purposes. I'd like to point out um, the FY17 adopted budget was actually $32,218,217. The differences there are, the, the majority of the difference are grants and then the approved um, use of the fund balance for some supplementals of almost 1.9 million of which 1.2 almost 1.2 million of that was for the fire apparatus payoff so taking those out of the equation the um, the overall percentage increase between the FY 17 adopted budget 
and the FY18 mayor approved general fund budget is 0.7 percent increase and if it would please the chairman I'll go through the detail please. okay so starting with the sales and use tax category there is a 1 percent increase estimated for FY18 from the FY17 adopted budget um, we are running a little bit less than that currently but um, hope that the remainder of the year will be favorable the um, state's consensus revenue estimate that the the state Missouri state um, budget was voted on was an estimated increase of 1.9 percent for the sales tax and then um, just as a piece of information the city of Columbia has a 1 percent sales tax increase included in their FY18 budget should I just continue on unless there are any questions okay so the intergovernmental taxes group includes the motor vehicle tax and the gas tax and road and bridge tax there is a slight increase of um, $39,000 which is about 1.8 percent and that is um, on the motor vehicle tax we're showing actually a 2 percent increase uh, year to date and then on the gasoline tax that's a three-year rolling average on the cigarette tax line which is the other taxes it is a decrease of a thousand dollars from the 2017 adopted because we have been seeing uh, revenues trending down with the cigarette tax the next section is the franchise and utility tax um, we are reflecting a um, a small increase in the um, electric utility tax from four million in 2017 to four million fifty thousand um, basically for the um, the new chamber factory estimate of the um, use the factory use of the electricity and and what grut taxes will be uh, increased from that new facility the um, gas utility tax is a decrease of a hundred thousand dollars from last year's adopted budget um, based on a four-year rolling average so it's taken into consideration the mild winters that we've had the last couple of years the um, telephone cell utility tax is a little bit of a decrease based on a three-year rolling average and the cable franchise fee is uh, remaining the same based on both a two-year rolling average and a three-year average so overall for that category there's about a seventy thousand there is a seventy thousand dollar decrease in projections between the 2017 adopted and the 2018 uh, mayor approved moving on to um, property taxes we've got an increase in the current property tax line based on a one-year rolling average we do have some preliminary um, assessed valuations from both Cole and Callaway County that we just received this week so there might be um, an update to this number but this is what we, this is the best estimate we have at this point the delinquent property taxes are down slightly but that is kind of good news because what has happened is the current property taxes have increased so there's been less delinquencies um, the financial institution tax is a little bit higher than um, the previous year based on a two-year rolling average we actually re, um, the 2017 actual to date is actually fifty three thousand dollars so this is a fairly conservative estimate at forty eight thousand the um, the next two lines the property tax interest and penalties and the surtax receipts um, remain the same we have a uh, or the surtax receipts county reimbursement the surtax receipts line itself is a little bit of an increase based on a one-year rolling average and the special tax revenue is a little bit of an increase based on the 2016 actual um, and removing some of those one times but adding one times that we're aware of for 2017 so the property tax section in total is about two and a half percent higher than the FY17 adopted or $131,700 
Moving on um, to the charges for services. The first line is administrative chargebacks. Um, and this is based on um, the calculation that we do in finance that we um, take the administrative um, departments of the city and allocate those to the, the funds, including airport, transit, parking, wastewater, and parks. So th those are a calculation based on personnel costs and um, operating expenditures for those administrative departments. So that has an increase of about $33,000 over FY17 adopted. Um, the EMT reimbursement is a contract with the county and that it remains the same at 25000 The street cuts, we see a little bit of a decrease based on some uh, three and two year rolling averages. The fuel chargebacks, this is um, basically the fuel chargeback um, for the housing authority. The parts chargeback remains the same at 185000 The labor chargeback increases uh, $5,000. The, the labor um, charge was increased to $90 an hour by our central maintenance. The rent city hall, you'll see a decrease of $35,000. This is the rent that um, the parks department was paying for the annex. And now that um, they're mostly moved out into the link, um, there will not be rent on that um, facility for FY18 because of the move of the muni municipal court to that annex. Rent on tower sites increased $36,000 based on a two-year rolling average. The Cole County 911 reimbursement is a calculation of 25% of our total uh, 911 expenses. So that fluctuates based on um, the department's um, budget for that section, for that department. The Cole County GIS Joint Cooperative has, uh, is a $15,000 contract with the Cole County, plus we've added um, $1,850 annually for their share of the GeoCortex software that was implemented with the GIS um, department. Um, last year. There's no change in the sale of grave sites and then the TIF administration fee. Um, there, there is a calculation for the Capitol Mall that includes a 5% escalator and the south side. So those are estimates um, and it is estimated to decrease about $7,000. So the total for that section, the charges for services, is about a, uh, a t in total is about 1.8% increase over the FY17 adopted, or about $48,800. I have a question. Um, thank you. Um, back when we talk about the rent tower um, sites, I see that there's quite a bit, uh, quite a huge increase from 2017 adopted, but also quite a bit of a fluctuation in um, the numbers of 2016. Um, can you explain why we're going back up to 140,000 on that one? Um, the the 140,000 is based on a two-year rolling average um, that gets you about 139,000, and then the one-year rolling average is af actually 145,000. So um, we have different arrangements at the different tower sites, and their different timing of the payments that it's really hard to compare the year to year. That's why I'd rather do the two and three year averages. Mm -hmm. Okay, proceed. Okay, moving on to the fees, licenses, and permits section. We see a little bit of a, uh, a decrease on the liquor licenses, and that is based on a, a one year rolling average. And then also looking at our year to date actual plus the remaining month's estimate. So that is um, set at 59,000. The business licenses, home occupation permits did not change from the previous year, uh, nor did the abandoned building admin fee. The building construction fees, there is an increase of 95000 for FY18's adopted budget. 
This is based on a three-year average plus the um, addition of the new high school one-time fees of around $85,000. That's the major difference in the estimate. The electrical certificates and electrical permits, plumbing licenses all remain the same. The plumbing permits, there's a little bit of a decrease and that was based on a two-year rolling average. There were no changes for other licenses and permits, daycare inspection fees, food inspection fees, curb cut permits, board of adjustment fees, um, and all of those are no changes. The sign permits, um, there's about a $900 increase, and that was based on a three-year and a two-year rolling average. The demolition permits, the accident reporting fees, and the blasting, no change. The animal redemption fees, there's a $3,000 increase, and that's based on a three-year rolling average. Animal vaccination fees has an increase of about $500. That is also based on a three-year rolling average. Animal cremation fees, $3,000 increase based on a two-year rolling average. Um, the taxi permits goes away because of the changes that were made to the, the, the code um, with the Uber. So tax... Uh, uh, Individual taxi uh, drivers do not require a permit. The vacating right of way, no change. Rezoning request is trending down, so there was a, a reduction of $2,000 in that line item, and then there was no change for planning and zoning review fees or non refundable plans or specs. So the total for that section is, it, is $800,000. $700, which is an increase of $92,300 from the FY17 adopted. Good if there aren't any questions, I'll keep moving. Okay. The next section is a section that we um, did trend down. Uh, the fines and forfeiture section, the court costs is $2,500 less than the FY17 adopted, and the police fines traffic is about $110,000 less. And these reductions are due to some legislation that were passed um, actually a couple of years ago limiting those maximum fines, and our, our budget was never adjusted for those items. In total, the fines and forfeiture section is $115,000 less than uh, the FY17 adopted budget. Okay. Um, moving on to um, contributions donations section, the big item on that in that section is the street re repair that's part of the solid waste contract. Um, and that is set by contract. It, it is it's, uh, a $10,612 increase over FY17 adopted. And that basically is the only thing that we budget in that section because of the nature of contributions and donations. The other operating revenue section, there's no changes to the miscellaneous line of 35000 no changes to the revenue share, which is um, the purchasing card revenue share that we have um, with the with our contract and the banking services insurance claims uh, at 20,000 and cafeteria cafeteria refunds of 10,000 no change so that section remains the same at eighty three thousand um, dollars for the total which is no increase from the 2017 adopted moving on to interest income there's a slight change there, uh, probably not as much as we could go to, but because we are rebidding that bi banking services, we don't know what the potential is. There could be some lowering of the interest rate that we're curr currently receiving in our um, banking services bid. So we stayed conservative there. There is a, an $11,000 increase, um, but that is, if you, you can see by the uh, FY15 actual and the FY16 actual, that is actually 
you know, quite conservative as far as the budget amount. Under the other non-operating revenue, there is an adjustment on the sale of assets, uh, an increase from the uh, 2017 adopted of $20,000 up to $45,000 projection, and that is based on what we've been seeing for average sale of vehicles and the um, number of vehicles that um, are being proposed to be replaced and those that will be sold. The transfers in is transfers from the lodging tax, and that is uh, about $224 higher than the FY17 adopted budget. And that is the only item that is budgeted in that section. So it, it, the total amount for that section is $24,024 compared to $23,800 in FY17. So I want to point out that that, that is um, our general fund revenues before any kind of grants. So the totals, um, just as a, you know, just a piece of information, um, the totals for that, for that, for those sections, um, in 2017, the adopted amount was $31,388,243. In our FY18, uh, mayor approved budget is $31,668,980, which is almost 281,000 increase uh, at 0.89% increase. Moving on to the grants. The entitlement grant, we have a slight increase of $7,218, and this is based on um, the expenditures of the salary information for that grant section and, pa and protective and planning, planning and protective services. We do not budget on the police department until um, there is an assurance that the grant will be accepted or the application will be accepted, so you won't see anything budgeted for the um, non-departmental, non the police department. The next budgeted line item will be the school resource officer. And this, um, this amount is based on 50% of the total school resource officer expenses um, as contracted with the uh, Jefferson City Public School District. It does show an increase, um, and that is based on the current year's increase of another school resource officer. The total for that section is $231,623, which is an increase of $37,081 over the FY17 adopted budget. Moving on under the Mustang grants, um, in FY17, that total was 26000 which was broken up of uh, 20000 toward an officer's sal salary and 6000 for a DEA vehicle. We um, have not received the um, officer's salary and benefits of 20000 so we're only budgeting for the um, DEA vehicle of 6000 If that does come in, of course, we'll bring it forward to the council. The fire department and planning and protective services admin, there are no budget items for that. The next uh, budgeted line item is planning and protective services MPO. The um, first line item um, is a reduction from the FY17 adopted budget of 77,000 and that is based on 80% of the total MPO expenses. Um, because of some of the reclassification or reorganization of protective planning and protective services, um, that total department's budget has decreased and that is reflected here. The um, local grant section or line item of that section is um, the remaining amount that the county will pay, uh, contribute and pay for. So in total, that section is um, projected to be $301,363 for FY18 
compared to $383,314 for FY17, which is a reduction of almost $82,000. And then the, the next section is Planning and Protective Services Redevelopment Grants. And that local grant line is um, based on the allied contract that states that 6,000 annually needs to go for the uh, household waste and 9,000 for recycling education promotion. Um, the remaining $5,500 is from Cole County for the um, household waste ongoing. No change from FY17. So the total revenue for the general fund for 2018 mayor approved budget is $32,441,302.38 compared to FY17 adopted of $32,218,216.97. It's an increase of $223,085.41 or a 0.7 percent increase. Be happy to answer any questions. Councilman Hussey. Just a couple for you. The uh, <coughs> two-year and three-year rolling averages, when you refer to those, what's the specific time frame that you're using to create that average? For the most part, this was developed um, back in the end of April, beginning, or actually in May, so it would have been through April. But for a lot of these line items, I, when I'm basing it on those rolling averages, I've updated it through current. Okay. Through, so it would be through June 30th. So it's actual numbers for 24 months or 36 months. Yes. And so then my, my follow up would be in the Finance Committee, you often give us that revenue model projection and then it's like actuals for the year and then you make a projection as to how the year might end as well correct and I know that's kind of a projection and it things can change correct um, basically I take the budgeted amount allocate it uh, according to historical collections mm -hmm. for each of the months and then as actual comes in replace the projection with actual okay so if somebody looks at, and I guess where I'm going with it, on some of them is like for sales tax and grunt tax and some of these, if you look at the revenue model, the projection, it, it'll come in lower than what's in the budget for the year. But yet, when we then put a figure into the budget, so for example on sales tax where mm -hmm. the budget says 11.4 million, the 17 budget says 11.3 million, the revenue model projection says 11.163 million is where we're as, as of June 30th where we're projected to end, and that can certainly change if we have some good months between now and then. Um, I guess I always I'm always cautious and hesitant about being too aggressive because I felt like last year we were aggressive with our sales tax budget um, and, and some of those other items. 11.413 million is a number we've never hit before. 11.3 million is a number we've never hit before. Um, at what point do we need to look at that and say it might be too big of a stretch based on how this budget year is trending? Does that my question mm -hmm. make sense? Um, it's not well, this it's a statement. <laughs> yeah, this but the sales tax um, most current. Um, the actual through July 7th and the projected for the remaining months is 11245000 So it is very close. So, so if we come in with improved. another good month, it's g we're going to hit that 11.3. Okay. And then on items like the grunt tax, um, where I believe like the year in projection puts us, at th and I'm going off the last finance mm -hmm. committee one, which is a little dated, but... 7.2 million, the budget was 7.5, the request is 7.43, but it seems like, is that a line item that's trending the other way? 
even with the increase in the tax a couple of years ago, what makes us think that that's a line item that might turn around and certainly go up again? And I know that's a very, very weather related one. And we've had a lot of it mild is. winters. Um, my air conditioner is running a lot lately, which should help. But and I guess you don't necessarily have to answer to that question, but I just express a little bit of caution for all of us that, again, some of these projections when we use two and three are rolling averages, they can be increasing, but the trend may not be that way on some of those line items. And so I just urge us, especially on these ones where we've seen a trend that's gone mm -hmm. down, we still have that year hanging on that was on the higher end maybe. Um, so I'm not saying you have to have an answer to that, but everybody should turn on their air conditioner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Run their heaters in the winter. Yeah, and, and in total, that section has a $70,000 decrease uh, of the, F the FY18 over FY17, but also included in that is that new factory, which was a, um, a bump up of about 85000 So there, you know, the, the especially the gas utility tax, there is a $100,000 increase in the projection. In that 85 came like a chamber projection for us. Yes. Do they factor in also, aren't we losing a factory as well in the next six to nine months? Is that factored in as well that we may have a factory go offline? Yeah, that was too recent okay. of an event for it to be included in these numbers. Okay. But I also yeah. think that's a year away or so. Yeah, Councilman Price. Yeah, I was just going to follow up on that too. Yeah, my understanding is uh, Capital Connell Products is probably not going to be here. There's a, there's a good chance, and uh, there's another one I had heard. I don't have a name, but uh, could potentially not be here next year. So uh, just want to make sure we don't get too overly aggressive on uh, anticipating a new one coming in with uh, knowledge that a uh, couple, one or two, might be leaving. So, would you like to say something? Did you have something you wanted um, to say? No. We'll follow up on something. Okay. Um, Councilman Huff. And, and I mean, just to, and I understand that the grunt tax is, again, heavily dependent on weather, right? I mean, people use, and I know that there's the business side of that tax, but also just the personal side that we pay into it. And yeah, the past couple winters have been mild. My furnace did not run as much this past year as it has in. I've looked at my utility bill. It looks great lately, <laughs> but I've had worse years on that utility bill. Um, I, you know, and I would just say I'd be really curious uh, after the eclipse takes place. Like I think that's going to be an economic boost on sales tax and lodging tax, um, but that's a once in a lifetime event, and so we won't even know those numbers until October. I mean, if it's in October, August twenty-first, that's. October yeah, and, sales and depending on when businesses, whether they have quarterly filing or monthly filing, it could be even later than that. Okay. So really that wouldn't even be a factor. So e this year could end really well, but I would still express the same mm -hmm. caution about being too aggressive in growth. And Carl, I, I encourage further discussion on this, Revenue. I know that we're um, just now getting our teeth into this and this will be the, 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 the main goal, I think, for us to start with is to just really feel comfortable about that number. So if there's um, any questions you might have, I know that that discussion doesn't end tonight. It can go on until we approve the budget. But um, we, we last year we were noted that we actually did approve a revenue, and I'm not pressuring us to do that, but we, we actually approved it for last year. So I'm not going to ask you to do that unless I have a motion. But but for now, we're just still in the early stages of, of um, determining what the revenue should be. Uh, Councilman Prather. Well, I'm pretty comfortable with the revenues, and like you had stated, uh, we can't change those if, if we find cause. And uh, this is a long process, and if should uh, those rolling averages come in and be a little bit better, uh, it will give us an opportunity later to increase. So. Uh, uh, this is basically a starting point, and uh, personally, I'm comfortable with those numbers. Councilman, I have a question back on um, in the fees, licenses, and permit section. You mentioned the police fines, the traffic. We had budgeted 
860, and then I, it was probably Senate Bill 5 or something a couple of years ago, or one of those that changed it. I know the actuals for 16 were 783. Is that, we budgeted 750, is that settled in to be the new norm? Was the 783, I guess, an outlier is a year, or are these trending down at this point? I believe that there was some legislation passed in 2015 that affected the 16, and then there was additional imp additional legislation on top of that that even had tighter maximum fines. So there was actually two years in a row, if I'm not mistaken, that had legislation passed that would um, limit what we could um, collect on some of these fines. Okay. So I don't know if. Ryan or the attorney or pol police chief want to add anything more to that? Just a history on the on the legislation. The 2015 legislation primarily dealt with traffic violations, and the uh, 2016 legislation primarily dealt with caps on non-traffic, so code enforcement things like that. So it was kind of two different packages. So how that affects that particular revenue item, I'm. I don't know if we're at a place where we can actually figure out what the new normal is uh, because it was kind of a double whammy of, of some changes. Well, and I guess <coughs> if that trend is, there's always this, you don't want to have the perception out there that you're balancing your budget based off of fines and, and these sorts of things. If for some reason the new normal, instead of being 750 was 675 and so we lose that $75,000 in revenue is there is there an offset that sort of automatically happens on the expense side you know sometimes you don't get the revenue which means you don't pay for staffing or certain services so that's just a loss of revenue but expenditures that stay the same okay good, good point just a chair Yes, and just to uh, uh, comment to what Councilman Hussey was saying, I would uh, probably um, look at those trends to continue to to trend downwards uh, when it comes to fine and forfeitures as we're moving forward. So I don't see those ticking back up. So if that's a concern, then I might need to adjust it now. I'd encourage you to provide anything to staff that you want further information on, maybe greater rationale for any of these items. Um, I think they've done an, uh, a great job of um, putting this together, but may need we may need more clarification. Okay. A moment for any further revenue discussion. Um, Councilman Prather. Uh, I move that we uh, accept the uh, revenues as projected in the mayor's budget. We have a motion and a second on the. Uh, that become uh, dis discussion. We do need a starting point, and like I said, these can be changed, but uh, we need to have something set to. Uh, uh, to really, before we get into the expense side of it, to have something to uh, uh, go off as far as revenues. And like I said, if uh, it comes in reports in, in the subsequent weeks that things can be changed, then we should do so. But uh, this time, I think we need to uh, set a number and uh, work from it. Any other discussion on the motion in front of us? I thought um, the 0.7 was pretty conservative in terms of sales, and then we had some reduction in the fines and forfeitures and that we kept seeing at the budget meetings that were behind projections. So the, the things that were corrected are, are the things that I would have uh, been asking questions about. No further discussion, it prepares we're ready to vote on the motion. All those, uh, roll call, or is it all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. We have a 
we have put on the, what I would call the parking lot until we finally bu approve our budget. This is not, this is a, sets out there until we uh, formally approve our budget as a, as a benchmark for which we're going to plan around. Uh, that would be the best way I could characterize what we just did. Uh, any questions about that? Okay, so we're going to work off of this until we can pre be proved otherwise. And um, so uh, there's uh, also it was brought up earlier about some count, uh, councilmen and ladies that are not going to be able to be at our future meetings. So anything you're not going to be at, uh, let, let me know or the clerk know or so, uh, somebody to know that you won't be at a meeting so we can plan around that. I'd like to have at least seven or eight council available each meeting. Uh, so having said that, there appears to be a conflict this Thursday that we could <coughs> potentially uh, launch into our Thursday discussion, a continued discussion on revenue, and if we should uh, should uh, make progress on that tonight, then we may, we may be able, as a group, choose to cancel Thursday meeting. Any discussion on that? Keep moving forward. I, I personally won't be here, so. Okay. So, <clears throat> we have on our agenda revenue discussion, we just had that, and we have, uh, we're going to talk about the revenue projection, and then we will readdress it next Monday uh, as at our next meeting. Um, and then I will ask for some sort of motion to cancel Thursday meeting at the end of this meeting. So, we're going to launch into the um, five year forecast. Mr. Chairman, as part of the revenue discussion, there was some interest in um, um, an overview of local use tax. And I didn't know if you wanted that to be part of this discussion or, um, or have that at a later date. Uh, does that pertain to the, the subject we were talking about at our budget meetings? Our the finance, finance meeting, meeting yeah. yes. Um, what's the, the pleasure? Some in here have not heard the, the issue that we may be. Is that on our next agenda for uh, council, full council? Um, actually, it probably is more appropriate to talk about it during the revenue discussion or the budget highlight. I mean, it's not in our budget, um, but it is a. It was brought forward by the finance committee to maybe include it as part of the the budget discussions. Uh, sure, I'll, I'll yield to your judgment on how you want to do that. So at our last finance meeting, um, there was an agenda item um, entitled Overview of the Use Tax. And we're bringing this up because of um, the issue of um, a deadline of November of 2018. Basically, if, the, uh, if we don't bring forward on a ballot issue, um, a, a continuation of a local sales tax on motor vehicles purchased, um, that revenue stream will end. Um, and that will have an impact on our City of Jefferson budget by $240,000 annually. That was the, um, a case that was decided by the Missouri Supreme Court. It had some legislation um, for a couple years that delayed that uh, implementation, but now the deadline is November of 2018. So um, in looking at that and bringing forward um, the, um, that out-of-state motor vehicle sales, we wanted to uh, bring forward a the local use tax. So use tax, it's not an internet tax. It's the, the use tax is paid by the purchaser, not the seller. But it is basic, it can be thought of as, as like a sales tax on goods that are purchased from out of state that are shipped to Missouri. Um, the, the city can impose a local use tax that's at the same rate as their local sales tax. But that local use tax must be submitted to the voters of the city and passed by a majority vote. Um, the projections from the Department of Revenue is that in calendar year 2016, there was $77 million in taxable sales or purchases that were 
subject to a use tax. Um, so this, you know, applying our our two percent local sales tax, the one percent general, the half percent capital improvement, and the half percent parks would amount to um, approximately a million five in additional revenues. Um, this has also been brought to light because of Amazon's voluntary payment of the use tax that started back in February. Just as a piece of information, as of January 2017, there are, are 111 municipalities, 50 counties, and 191 special districts that do impose a use tax, including Cole and Callaway counties. And a question that was answered at the Finance Committee meeting was when did those use taxes start, especially for Cole County? Um, I did contact Cole County last week. They've had collections on the use tax since October of 1992. But they were stopped in 1996 because it never um, was sent to a vote of the people. So they had that vote and then it was implemented again in 1997. So they've been collecting the use tax all this time. Callaway County is more recent. They started in 2016. So basically with that Supreme Court decision about out-of-state motor vehicle, they, they ruled that only cities with a, a local use tax could collect that sales tax um, uh, going forward after November 2018. Either that or you have to pass, you, the voters have to pass the um, local sales tax on motor vehicle purchases. So that's why we were bringing it forward. Um, there, is an Im there will be an impact to the city if, if we do nothing. Um, and we wanted to start the discussion about this out-of-state local sales tax on motor vehicle purchases and or use tax. Refresh our memory on when that would go into impact, uh, effect, did you say? Well, it has to go to a vote of the people, and it has to win by a majority vote. But so the, the loss the of this would impact what, what budget year? November of 2018 would be fiscal year 19. Okay. And, and, I, and, and to you, back to your yeah. point, would you, there's two opportunities potentially to mm -hmm. bring that before the, the voters. It would, would be April and October next year. Mm -hmm. Right? August. Uh, did we get clarity as to whether or not the November election was still an option? It's not as clear as you would hope, but I believe that um, the consensus seems to be that the November election uh, would also be available. Uh, any further discussion on that, the use tax or that point? Councilman Hussey. I think I would just add, I think Councilman Prather shared this at the Finance Committee as well, that the easier sell initially is the motor vehicle out-of-state sales tax because that's already a tax being collected in terms of putting something before the voters. Um, Amazon, they're voluntarily collecting, but they're also projected now to what, open up a distribution facility in St. Louis area. So. Say that yeah. they would have been required to have the sales tax Correct. anyway. So That's, yes, I think that led I think to the voluntary. Everyone payment. kind of knew that was coming, but yeah. um, but I, I guess I would agree that we need to have a conversation as a council about what ballot measures look like for 2018 before we. I think the motor vehicle sales tax is a easier one to put forth just because it's already a collected tax and it makes sense. But when you start talking use tax or stormwater fee or some of these things that are options, it's worthy of us having a conversation, whether that's in the finance committee, you know, in the coming months or, or at the full council level at least. Um, an April election needs something on the ballot by what, mid-January or so, or that, that second meeting in January would be the last option. So I think we need to pick our election and go for it. but. Certainly no decision would need to be made at this moment in time. Okay. Okay. So um, moving on to the budget highlights. Um, it is the three-page document that was just handed out. 
has a little bit more detail than um, the mayor's letter. Um, I won't read every number on this since you have it in front of you, but um, the proposed budget across all funds is $63,353,702.10. And there is a breakdown of those budgeted expenditures by fund. Um, the general fund being $32,441,302.38. There is a pay plan included in the mayor's um, approved budget. There is a proposed 2% pay increase. That is not an across the board whatsoever. It is a, a, um, an amount of money that there are should be further discussions on how that um, is implemented. But that total cost across all funds is $530,362.24. That does include um, uh, salary and benefits. And the um, general fund share of that is $399,606.69. So basically for every 1% pay increase, the general fund is about a $200,000 effect. The health insurance costs that are built into this uh, 2018 mayor's approved budget includes a 7% increase at a total cost to all funds of $186,400. And for that, the general fund, this is $155,144. You should also um, have your um, large pink sheet summary, as it's referred to. That has the um, section two for any additional positions or personnel. And the, the shaded green lines are the lines that are funded in the mayor's budget. In the section three are those additional vehicles and equipment, and in section four are is just another is a tuition reimbursement line item that was funded. So it, with the purchase of vehicles and equipment from the general fund, there are five new black and white vehicles and an animal control truck funded in the police department's budget. Um, that amounts to one hundred seventy-two thousand nine hundred and two dollars. Under the fire department, the mayor's proposed budget includes the inflatable rescue boat Zodiac with trailer and a copy machine at a total cost of $42,985. For public works, the mayor's proposed budget includes the request to replace four inspection vehicles and a one-ton heavy-duty pickup at a total cost of $171,000. And then for information technology, there's a um, new mail machine that cost $15,000 uh, across all departments and funds, of which the general fund share is $8,700. Those are all items that are funded in the mayor's budget. As far as new positions, that section two, there were eight full-time positions and three part-time positions that re were requested as part of the FY18 budget. The mayor's budget includes a plan reviewer um, a full-time plan reviewer, but this is actually taking two part-time positions and eliminating those to fund this one full-time position with benefits. It also includes a part-time property room technician from the general fund. The mayor's budget includes um, a recreation specialist and a parks maintenance worker from the parks fund, and the remaining positions were not funded. Included in that section two, the first line you'll see floating holidays, that or holiday or days. The mayor's proposed budget includes adding a floating holiday for all benefited employees, employed November 1st of each year, but must be used by October 31st. So it's not eligible to be paid out or accumulated. So because of this restriction, those costs will be minimal, and the use will be monitored and approved by management. So. Um, that we don't have a lot of problems with overtime, that we intend to um, uh, use just the overtime that is already budgeted. 
There may be some lost productivity and maybe some step up pay in the fire department. Um, the Austin Peters Group classification and compensation study recommended that the city should move forward toward the peer group in number of sick and vacation days. Well, this floating holiday will increase time off for employees while minimizing costs to the city, unlike adding sick or vacation days. Also want to note that um, the transit subsidy for 2000, fiscal year 2018 is projected at $1,023,442 from the general fund. And the airport subsidy is $225,547 from the general fund. On your large summary sheet, the section one toward the bottom, you'll see the estimated FY17 ending unreserved fund balance um, is projected to be eight point, a little bit over 8.5 million, which is 26.52%. And the FY18 unreserved fund balance is um, that a little over a million, 8,544,000, which represents 26.34%. I know I went through that pretty fast. <laughs> uh, yeah, Steve. Steve. May I just highlight two things that um, uh, Margie mentioned, and that is one on the salaries, that that's a number that's in there for right now. I think that number is inadequate. I think it should be a higher number for um, employee salaries. Um, but we can talk about that, I know, when we get to the details. And then the other item is on the health insurance. Um, we have the 7% increase in there. I suspect it'll be higher than that. And if it is higher than that, um, then I think a decision will need to be made about um, whether we pass that on, that increased cost on to employees, or whether we're able to uh, readjust our plan somehow to be able to accommodate that or a combination of the both. So I wanted to make sure we pointed those uh, points out that Margie did mention. Councilman Henry. I'm sure it's in the midst of all this somewhere. Uh, but Margie, could you tell us what, what was the, the pay increase last year? What was the how was that how was that last how was that done last year? If, if you could uh, refresh my memory on that. Yeah, it was a, a two percent and a two percent. Two percent at the beginning of the fiscal year and two percent after the um, study was completed. Which was question which was less than the recommendation um, from the um, consultant the Austin Peters consultant councilman Graham so uh, Steve this two percent here you said would not be across the board so this two percent is used how well I think that that's uh, um, uh, an item for discussion whenever we get okay. to that point maybe okay. if, if it's I know there was been some discussion last year about pay for performance well pay for performance in my mind uh, would um, warrant a larger percentage so it has an impact on employees that are performing um, we can talk about those details um, certainly could be a and across the board there's just several ways that um, that gets implemented and I think that's a uh, you know a conversation with the council about okay. what your um, interests are thank you I just didn't want people to think that that recommendation necessarily at this point is a 2% across the board uh, because in my mind I think that's a conversation we need to have whenever that time is and I guess that's what I was trying to get for you to bring out to clarify, so yes, that to clarify that. so we're all on the same page so that when we're on back and say everybody's getting a 2% right pay increase that's what's being proposed so thank you for clearing that. any further uh, do you have uh, any further items in the presentation on this? no unless there are any questions about the budget highlights we can move forward to the five-year forecast okay, okay. All right so another big sheet there's actually two pages to that document uh, just an alternate version being brought forward for your information this year so starting with the document that in the bottom left corner says general fund no unexpended so what I've got here um, are 2013 14 and 15 and 16 actual numbers 
the 2017 adopted budget, the 2018 projected column is the mayor's approved budget. And then um, there are assumptions made for those out years of 2019 through 2022. I'm not going to go into every line item, but what I've got are, um, is an analysis of revenues in total uh, since 2005 and what some of those years averages combined or looked at separately, looked at the last few years. Um, you'll see to the far right the gray shaded box that has the assumptions. So um, based on uh, this historical information on revenues, there is a 2.3% revenue increase built into the 2019 through 2022 years. That's based on um, an increase between FY15 and 16 actuals of 2.3%. A two-year average increase of 2.69%, a three-year average of 2.37%, and a 10-year average of 2.25%. So for the illustration purposes, there was a 2.3% increase built on to most of the lines. There are some lines that are excluded from any increase that we know are, are reducing, and that is basically the cigarette tax and some of those um, contribution donation lines, those, those lines you can see where there aren't any increases built in. So where you see the italicized percentage under the revenue section, it's not exactly 2.3 because of some of those lines that the increase doesn't apply to. In the expenditure section, there are also some um, assumptions made. In the personnel services, there is a 2% increase built in every year along with the 5% health insurance increase built in every year. For most of the other lines, the materials and supplies, contractual services, utilities, et cetera, it's a 2% increase built in. The shaded lines of purple and blue in the middle of the page are taken from the capital replacement plan that was done a couple of years ago. These are projections um, based on replacing vehicles um, at certain ages and equipment. Um, you'll notice that the numbers on average are about 300,000 for building or infrastructure and about 900,000 to a million for, for vehicles depending on, on the year we're looking at. So bottom line, in 2018, the mayor's approved budget, you'll see 26.12%, which is a little bit different than um, what I shared earlier. Um, and it's probably because of um, some reapproaches that uh, have happened since in, in the 2017 column that haven't been updated. But we're um, predicting an 8.5, almost 8.5 million unrestricted fund balance in 2018. And like I said, that's 26.12 percent. Where um, by policy we have set a no lower than 17 percent. And in those out years, you can see the reduction going down till we get to 2021, which is a uh, little under 15 percent, and then 2022, which is almost 11 percent. But um, the, the yellow shaded line will show you the, the net decrease to the fund balance. And if you look at that and also look at the blue and purple shaded lines, you'll see that that is where a lot of the management of the money is going to be if these revenues don't increase and that is that um, the capital replacement plan will um, have to keep using uh, equipment that is a little bit older than we would like. The difference between the first page and the second page in the revenue or in the um, the revenues are exactly the same in the expenditure section there is a line before the subtotal for the expenditures that is entitled projected budget variances 4% projected unexpended this is based on some historical information of 
the amount of actual expenditures compared to budgeted expenditures. Um, so I've got some documentation going back to tw 2010 of those variances. They range anywhere from 7.5% to almost 13%. Um, the, the median was 9.82%. Um, the the three-year average and the, well, the smallest variance was in 2014 at 7.47%. Three-year average is 7.99%. What I've got in here for illustration purposes is a very conservative 4%. So if um, history holds true and the actual expenditures um, are 4% below the budget, it makes quite a bit of difference in the bottom line. As you can see, even going out to the year 2022, we've got a 33% fund balance. Or the revenues are, yeah, the revenues um, are at that two, still at 2.3%. So just for illustration purposes, it's going to be in a range between the front page and the second page. And I went through that very quickly. Does anyone have any questions? Well, for even those who have been on the council a few years and seen this, it's still... Uh, a reminder each year uh, of how this works. I had notes from last year that we had a projection of 10% increase in the projections for health um, in last the, the last projection we went. So this was 5% increase in health care, right? That's what you said? In, the, in this five-year forecast, yeah, in the actual FY8 or the uh, 2018 mayor's approved budget, there's a 7% increase built in. And uh, I always look myself at that bottom line in terms of the orange and to keep us in that 17% range. So I appreciate the other illustration. Um, uh, the other thing I might add is um, I feel good about how, our, how, how this council has uh, addressed some of the issues with regard to the, uh, the capital improvements plan or the capital replacement plan. and. We have a sinking fund there in that purple area that I hope is achieving the goal we wanted it to. Um, so I don't know if the uh, city administrator has any comments on this. Um, I, I did want to just note that uh, I agree with you and appreciate that, although um, for the um, sinking fund, uh, I did take some of the money out of that. We've been typically doing 300000 and I left 200 uh, recommended to the mayor 200000 um, just based on you know, the overall budget and where we are on that. So that's certainly an item uh, to talk about. Any discussion on the projection? The forecast, rather. I'm looking to my right, left. Really nothing additional. I uh, have gone through this with, with uh, Steve and Margie and feel very uh, comfortable with the projections. And uh, so I think it looks to be conservative yet accurate from, you know, based on the background. So I, f I feel very uh, confident in it. Thank you. Um, therefore, I think um, this was a, a, a line, I, um, a budgeted, excuse me, an agenda item for uh, this Thursday is to go through this. So I think that maybe it deserves all of us to give another look at this and uh, bring up any questions you may have next Monday. And for the public, uh, should they f have any further questions, they can contact us or, or we would be prepared to discuss it again uh, as we launch into our, um, our uh, discussions about the expense side. Uh, Margie, can you walk us through the next few meetings? Uh, I think I will look for a motion to, to, uh, or I could just, well, about Thursday's meeting, could I, as a group, should we vote to cancel that meeting? Would that be the appropriate action? Okay. I think it'd be good to have that on the Okay, record. let's go ahead and uh, I would entertain a motion to cancel next Thursday's meeting. Second. Okay, all, 
Um, made by Hussey, seconded by Graham. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, a night off um, from You'll budget. And Councilman Mihaljevic, you said next Thursday. You're referring to this coming Thursday, the yes. 27th, correct? Yeah. Okay. Two more days, yes. Okay. Three. Um, this we'll Thursday. post that cancellation. Very good. And then that brings us to uh, the, d the discussion for the 31st, which is next Monday. We'll be um, uh, we'll proceed with uh, in what way? Um, at this point, we would start with um, the expenditures, the detailed expenditures by department, starting with the mayor and council, going through administration, pretty much basically what follows the book. And we will have the books available, I want to say, in the next couple of days, just to give us a chance to review them. So the hard copies of the books we had planned on distributing at the Thursday meeting, but you can come by them, pick them up, I would say. Wednesday, be safe. Okay. Sheila will send an e email when they're ready um, to be picked up if you would like to s see them in advance. Otherwise, they will be available Monday night, uh, the July 31st. And, again, and you do have your electron electronic version available in the Budget Committee packet. And again, for the public, it will be posted tomorrow on the web? Yes, Sign it will. Yeah, very good. Yes, Mayor Turgeon. And on that note, does everybody, I guess before they make the copies, is that assuming everybody wants a hard or a, the hard copy rather than the electronic? I, yes, I would. Okay. At this point. I would. Okay, just the, making the sure one, before you make all 10, so it one, sounds um, like you do. Okay. And, and I appreciate the point on it being electric, electronic and uh, it really takes a lot of staff time. I, I do go through that myself and I find the, the paper to be good at this point. If I was to create a, a, if we were going to electronic, my only change would be hyperlinking a, a, a table of contents, so I could go right to the tab. I don't know that I can do that here. The electronic version should have bookmarks on it. Okay. So at the bottom of your iPad, if you don't know where that is, I can Okay, you thanks. Can. So you can go directly to the tab section you want to go. Mm -hmm. There is some advantages to the electronic version. If you want to find out a line item like Old Town, you just search Old Town and you'll come to that line item. And so um, I've done that in the past, and I appreciate the comment. If there are any business, any further business to the right, to the left. I have a quick correction. I noticed I used my old letterhead on the letter I sent out today. So if you look at the top right-hand corner, it's our old website. So if anybody is referencing that, of course, it's jeffersoncitymo.gov, not the old .org that's lifted, listed here. So I apologize. I still have some old copies of my letterhead floating around. So it's jeffersoncitymo.gov, and that way, if the public sees this letter, they will be able to access our online meeting calendar at the correct site. Thank you. Thank you. If there are no further business, I'll declare us adjourned. All right. Thank you. Yes. Thanks. Steve, question for you. Yeah.